Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the Ultimate Guide to Redstone. In this video, we're going to be talking a little bit more about our two numbering systems, unary and binary. More specifically, we're going to talk about how you can convert numbers between them, because as it turns out, it's actually pretty simple to convert a unary number into a binary one, and conversely, it's also really easy to convert a binary number into a unary number. So that's what this whole video is going to be about. And let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, this right here is a device that takes in a unary number and outputs the equivalent binary number. Pretty simple. So this device is called an encoder. The reason it's called an encoder is because you're taking in a large number of inputs and you're outputting a smaller number of inputs. That's what an encoder is. So very simple and it's pretty easy to make too. So just for example, right now I'm inputting 0 in unary, so I'm getting 0 in binary. If I switch to inputting 1, I get 1 in binary, 2 is 2 in binary, and 3 is 3 in binary. Very easy. And this is just a 2-bit one, but this design is expandable, so you can make it as many bits as you want. Alright, so let's look at how this works. So. This device is actually really, really simple. It's essentially just a double inversion. So, for each unary number, I have it going through a torch onto a wire, and that wire has a torch going onto the binary output wires. So, very simple. So, here's how it works. For each unary number, when the torch turns off, that'll make any torch on this wire turn on. So I just put torches above the binary equivalent of the number, and that will give me the binary number. So for 1, I'd put 1 torch, for 2, and 3, essentially like that. If I wanted 4, I'd move over and do like this. And that's how you encode binary numbers from unary numbers. It's pretty easy. That's all I did for every single one. So that's 0. And when I turn on the unary number, that will turn on the torch for the binary number, and that will give you the output. Very, very easy device. Not hard at all. So in this case, I'm getting the 1, and in this case, I'm getting 2 because that torch turns off, that torch turns on, and that gets me 3. So yeah, very, very easy device. Now, you can actually make this slightly more efficient if you wanted to. You can actually make one that goes a bit like... Actually, you know, I'm just going to build it off camera to save time. One second. Okay, this is the most efficient encoder design. It is instant, absolutely no delay in encoding. The way this works is instead of using a double inversion, it just uses glowstone logic. So for example, right now I have zero. This is my one wire, so if I flip this, that turns it on. So essentially I'm just connecting this wire directly to the one wire. Now if I turn this one on, that's connected directly to the two wire, so it's going to turn that on. If I flip this one, that'll turn these on. And what I'm doing to prevent it from backflowing into the other unary wires is I'm using glowstone. Because redstone power can't travel down the glowstone, it'll just stay on the binary output wire. And in case you're wondering, the way I'm getting this wire to go over the glowstone block is I'm not. I'm just sending it under the glowstone block instead. So, zero tick, instant encoder, extremely efficient design. It's also fairly compact, so if you're going for high-performance encoding, this is the design I'd probably go for. So yeah, and that's converting unary to binary. It's actually pretty simple, and you know, the principle applies to many more bits than this. I'm just doing two bits for sake of simplicity and example. But yeah, so that's all you're doing. Essentially, you're just taking the unary number, you're plugging it into the b equivalent binary wires. Yeah, it's very manual, but very effective. So, now let's move on to converting decimal, excuse me, not decimal, binary numbers into unary numbers. Okay, so this right here is a device that converts binary numbers to unary numbers. And this device is called a decoder. The reason it's called a decoder is because it takes a small number of inputs and converts it into a large number of inputs. And again, I'm doing two bits just for sake of example. As you can see, decoders are a little bit more complex than encoders, but they're still using the same basic principle. So, let's just do a quick test. So this right here is 1, so if I flip 1, 
it'll move over, so there's zero, that's one in unary, so it's one, good. If I do two, that's two, okay, good. If, and if I flip three, it's three. Okay, good, there you go. So very basic decoder. It works just like you'd expect. And now I'm going to show you how it works. Okay, so I know this thing looks complex, but believe it or not, it's actually really simple. So first off, like an encoder, it's done in modules. So this is the module that decodes 0, this is a module that decodes 1, this is a module that decodes 2, and this is a module that decodes 3. And the way each of these modules works is essentially an AND gate. That's it. It's just an AND gate. So right now, for example, let's look at the module 0. What I'm doing here is I have a torch here, which is sending power into another torch. All that is is it's a double inversion. It's not doing anything, it's just sending the power from, whoops, from this wire straight down. That's it. And the way this behaves like an AND gate is like this. So if I start with an AND gate, I'm going to make a very basic AND gate. So essentially this is the equivalent of taking AND gate and inverting the inputs. And I know this is, mm, eh, what, whatever, I'll just do it like this. Yeah, this is essentially the equivalent of taking an AND gate, inverting the inputs. And this, if you think about it, does exactly what we wanted to do. We want on to make it turn off if we're, we have any bits on at all. Because if we have any bits on, that means we're not getting zero. The only time we're getting zero is if all bits are off. So that's how we decode zero. Very basic. Decoding one, if you notice, this looks pretty much exactly the same. The only difference is in this bit, the one bit, instead of having a torch coming from here, we have a repeater. What that means is that's essentially inverting the first input of the, our AND gate. So, well, actually it's not really inverting, it's bringing it back to normal since they're already inverted. So, essentially that's doing this. And if you think about it, this works precisely as you'd expect, because that gives us a 1, and if any other bit combination is on, then we can't possibly have 1. So, the only time we have 1 is if we have the 1 bit on and nothing else. So there and it does exactly that. So now, two, same story, except with this moved over here, because the only time we can get two is if we have the two bit on, and nothing else. And three, I'm sure you can imagine, same story. Only if all the bits are on, or both bits are on, rather, will we get now. But any other combination, we can't possibly be getting three. And that's all the logic that goes into the decoder. I know that sounds like it might be a little complex, but the logic is actually pretty simple, especially once you realize there's a pretty distinct pattern to it. So you start off with zero. Now, essentially, you can just stack it like this, and you put a repeater for each of the binary equivalents. So, for instance, I stack here. Now I place a repeater here. That's one, two, one, one. So that's three in binary. And yeah, you just keep placing repeaters in the pattern of what the binary number is. And that's one reason I really like this decoder design. It's not the most efficient design, but it's really easy to build, and especially when you're building really large decoders, ease of build is really important in decoders. So, yeah. Now, like I said, there are more efficient designs, so I'm going to show you a more efficient design right now. Okay, so this is a better decoder design. It's two ticks, it's very compact, it's very fast, it's in my opinion, probably the best decoder design. So, like I said, it's two ticks. It's using the exact same logic as this one. It's just doing it in a slightly different way. So right now, I have one. So, in order to send power to this, I have a repeater going here. And for two, I have also a repeater going into here. That's sending power into that water. So, same logic, just a little bit compacted. And it's getting rid of the double inversion at the start, so that saves us a tick. So, there we go. It's two ticks, pretty fast. Now for the second bit, same story. I have this torch here, which is powering this, and I have this repeater going here to the second bit. So, yeah. That way I can decode the second bit properly. And now for this uh, third bit, same. it's this exact same logic. So there's the torch from the th th uh, second bit, there's the repeater from the first bit. So there. That's 
There we go, that's decoding a 2, and lastly decoding a 3. Just two torches. So yeah, my opinion, best decoder design. The only reason I don't use this decoder design that much is it's not exactly easy to build. I mean, it's a really cool design, it's just, yeah, not easy to build. But, hey, it's a really nice design, and if you have the patience to build out really big numbers of these, that's a really good decoder design. So yeah. And that will be pretty much everything I want to cover in this video. So, now you know how to make a really fast decoder and a really fast encoder. And actually, just as a quick bonus, I'm going to show you something really quick. This is really just for fun, but I hooked up the encoder we built to the decoder we built. So now, we input a unary number, and we get that exact unary number right back out. So, yeah. And, and only two ticks. But hey, still, this just proves the concept. They are essentially doing the exact same thing, except in reverse. One's taking unary to binary, the other's taking binary and changing it to unary. So yeah, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I know there's probably some of you itching to get to the interesting mathematical functions and interesting stuff you can do with math, but don't worry, we're actually pretty close to getting into all that. I think there's only going to be one, maybe two, but probably just one more videos before we actually get into doing actual math with redstone. But yeah, hope you enjoyed, and see you next time.